Let's look at examples of how to write loops using assembly. We'll look at how to write for loop, we'll look at how to write while loop, and I'll give you examples using two functions. The first function, we'll use a for loop to sum the numbers up to n. And then for the next example, we'll write a function that will calculate a power of 2. So first, let's start with the basics. To write a for loop inside assembly, we will start with 4. And then we'll need 3 open and closing curly braces. Inside the first curly braces, we'll write some code that will initialize a local variable. So let's say that i is equal to 0. We're saying that we're going to start this for loop from i equals 0. In between the two curly braces, we'll write our condition. We'll run the for loop 10 times, so less than i less than 10. And then inside the second curly braces, we'll write a code that will execute after the for loop. What we're going to do is increment i by 1. i is equal to add to i 1. So what's going on here is we're running a for loop from i equals 0 while i is less than 10. And then after one iteration, we'll increment i by 1. Inside the last curly braces, we'll write our code. For this example, we have a variable named z initialized over here. Let's just increment z by 1. z is equal to add to z 1. Okay, so this is an example of a for loop. Let's take a look at an example of a while loop. We'll first initialize the while loop by declaring a local variable. This will be the variable that keeps track of the number of iterations in the while loop. Let i equals 0. Now surprisingly, to write a while loop inside assembly, we're going to use the same syntax as over here. So I'll copy this and paste it here. Since we're going to be using a while loop, we're not going to need this. And we'll increment this variable i inside the while loop. So we're also going to remove this. And let's run the while loop five times, starting from zero. And inside the while loop, let's increment this counter variable. Say i is equal to add to i one. Increment it by one. And then we also increment z by one. z is increment z by one. Add to z one. Okay, so these are two basic examples of for loop and while loop. Let's move on. Let's use a for loop to write a function that will sum the integers from 1 all the way up to n minus 1. So I'll say 4. Then we're going to prepare the curly braces. We're going to sum all the integers from i equals 1 all the way up to n minus 1. So for the initialization code, we'll say let i start from 1. We'll run the loop while i is less than n. Less than i less than n. And after each iteration, we'll increment i by 1. i equals add to i 1. The variable z keeps track of the sum, so to this z, we'll add i. 2z, add to z, i. Okay, so this is an example of using a for loop to find the sum of integers from i equals 1 all the way up to n minus 1. Okay, let's move on. So the last example, we'll write a function that will calculate x raised to the power of n, where n is a power of 2. So n takes on the form n is equal to 2 to the k, where k is some other number. And for this example, we'll keep it simple and assume that x is greater than 0, and that no overflow will occur. We'll approach this problem in two steps. We'll first write the algorithm in the ideal case, and then in step 2, we'll handle the edge cases. The cases that we'll need to handle are when n is equal to 0 and when n is greater than 0. And we also check that n is a power of 2. So in the ideal case, n will be greater than 0 and n will also be a power of 2. So for now, we'll assume that n is greater than 0 and we'll initialize z to equal to x. And we can do this since we're assuming that n is greater than 0. Next, we'll use the for loop syntax to calculate x to the n, so say 4. Curly braces, curly braces, and then inside the last curly braces, we'll write our code that will calculate x to the n. For now, we're going to assume that n is a power of 2, and let's say that n is equal to 2. Then how will we run one iteration? We initialize z equal to x, and this algorithm somehow needs to return x raised to the power of 2. We can do this by simply saying z multiplied by mol z by itself. The z that we're going to be returning is multiply z by z. Since we initialize z to x, 
this t will be x raised to the power of 2. Say n is equal to div n by 2. Now, if we started out with n equal to 2, and then we divide n by 2, now n is equal to 1. So how can we end this for loop? n is equal to 1, and we want to end this loop, so we can say greater than n1. Let's check that this algorithm is correct for n equal to 2. So for n equal to 2, we initialize z to x, and then this condition is true, so we run the for loop. z is equal to x, x multiplied by itself, we get z is equal to x squared. And then the new n will be the current n, which is equal to 2, divided by 2, so the new n will be equal to 1. On the next iteration, n is equal to 1, so the for loop ends. And the final output z will be equal to x squared. So this code is correct when n is equal to 2. How about when n is equal to 4? When n is equal to 4, on the first iteration, we will get z equal to x squared, and n will be equal to 2. On the next iteration, we have x squared multiplied by x squared, which is equal to x to the fourth. And since n is equal to 2, the new n will be equal to 1. And then on the next iteration, this part of the condition will fail. So we exit the loop. And we end up with z equals to x raised to the fourth. And you can also check for yourself that this code is correct for n equal to 8. And for all n of the form, to raise to some power of k. Okay, next I want to handle some edge cases. We assume that n is greater than 1, but how about the case for n equals 0? So we'll type switch n. There are two cases to handle when n is equal to 0, case 0. Then to z, we'll simply return 1. Assign to z 1. Otherwise, default, we'll assign z to be equal to x. And then remove this code. When n is equal to 0, then this part of the code will execute. z is set to 1, and since n is equal to 0, this for loop will not execute. So we simply return z equals 1. When n is greater than 0, then this part of the code will execute. Okay, so this handles one edge case. Next, I want to handle a case where n is not a power of 2. What we're going to do is at each iteration, we're going to check that n divides by 2. If n does not divide by 2, then we know that n is not of the form 2 raised to the power of k. So first we'll check here if mod n2, then we'll revert 0, 0. What this code over here is doing is that if n is an even number, if n divides by 2, then this part of the code will return a 0. So the code inside the curly braces, this part, will not execute. In other words, it will continue executing the rest of the code. However, if n is an odd number, then this part of the code will return a 1, and then we throw an error over here. So the code will finish execution over here. And then we'll do the same inside the for loop as well. So I'll copy this, and then paste it here. At the beginning of each iteration, we check that n divides by 2. If it does not, then we know that n is some odd number, so we'll throw an error. If n does divide by 2, then we'll continue executing the rest of the code. And this is how you would check that n is of the form 2 raised to some power of k. Okay, let's try compiling this contract. Hit Control S, contract compiles. Let's deploy this contract. Okay, let's call the function sum. Let's sum all the numbers up to 5, and this will exclude 5. So we're summing 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 6, plus 4 is equal to 10, so we should get a 10 back. And we do. Next, let's call this power 2k function. Let's compute 2 raised to the power of 8. And then we get 256 back. How about for n, we put in some number that is not of this form, n equals 2 to the k. For example, let's put in 3, and then let's call the function, and as expected, the function fails. And lastly, let's put in another number, let's say 3 raised to the power of 4, we expect it to be 81, call the function, and we get an 81 back.